the main reason why we attach scripts to game objects is because we want to manipulate the game object. But if we want to get really technical, we're not really manipulating the game object, but we are manipulating the components that are attached to a game object. And um, for example, if you want to change the position of our main player cube, you're not going to modify the main player cube game object, but you are going to modify the transform component that is attached to the game object. So let me show you a quick example here. If we want to change the position of the object using the transform component, we would have to affect, we would have to change the position property. If we want to move on the x-axis, we would have to change that property or the y-axis or the z-axis. Now, how would we go about doing that in our script? Well, we already have the co coordinates, spelled wrong, but uh, we already have the coordinates uh, variable in our uh, script. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's go ahead and just correct this really quick. Coordinates, that's better. So the first thing we want to do is to get a hold of the transform components in our game object. So, um, so we're going to do game object dot transform and we want the position property position it's going to equal our coordinates 3d go ahead and save this go back to the game and press play i now can change these values and these values will affect the transform component as you can see up there so whatever values are in my variable here, they become the same value in the transform variable. Now, let me go ahead and stop the game here. Go back to the script and remove this line of code or just comment it out. Go back to the game. Let's add a component called rigid body to our game object. And the uh, rigid body is a component that allows our game object to interact with the physics engine inside Unity 3D. Now, when I click play here, you're actually going to see the object, uh, the game object fall. And the reason for that is because the rigid body, uh, like I mentioned, the rigid body interacts with the physic engine, physics engine. Now, what if we want to get a hold of the rigid body component at start time, and we want to manipulate this use gravity in our start function here? we would have to declare a rigid body variable and we're going to use a function called get component we want the component type of rigid body and we can access that property use gravity um, like this so we'll set this to false. It's actually a good good idea to check for nulls. The reason why we do this is because if for whatever reason your rigid body, your game component doesn't have a rigid body, you will uh, you can avoid an exception here. So let's go ahead and save this. Now look at the uh, use gravity property here. Right at the beginning of the game, that is changed to false. Therefore, the our game object doesn't fall anymore. Another thing that we can do with scripting is to actually call functions on this components. And functions are not accessible from the inspector. In this case, let's go ahead and turn this back to, or just let's comment it out. So false, let's comment that out. And then let's access the rigid body and let's use a function called add force. We're gonna do vector three dot up times 500 force. So what this is going to do if we 
if we read this function really quick at the very beginning it's going to execute this log hello and it's going to log whatever name is inside the name variable then the uh, get component function is going to get a re reference to the rigid body class it's going to verify that it's not null and if it is not null then it's going to call the add force on the y on the y axis times 500f so let's go ahead and see what that looks like the game object goes up at the beginning of the game and then it starts to fall down <laughs> 